Aloha guys, welcome back to another episode of North Kalavaya. My name is Kavai, and on today's episode, I'm gonna show you what I bring to go crab staring for Dungeness and Rock Crab here in San Francisco at the beach and at the piers. So kick back and we stay go. The first thing I would suggest is getting a good pair of waders. Here in San Francisco, it's really cold. You don't really need a pair of waders, but if you wanna try and get your snare, you know, as far out as you can, you're gonna be walking into the water, you know, depending how, how far the break is, you're gonna be walking in, you know, five to 10 feet, you know, through the water. So I would suggest getting a good pair of waders. Uh, for me personally, I use a nylon type of waders. There's different styles of waders. There's um, neoprene, nylon, there's like a composite, like a mix, breathable waders. Uh, there's also chest waders, there's, uh, foot waders where you know the, the bottom's open or they have waders where it's, instead of a boot you just have this sock in there and you just get you know your own sandals so for me i use these nylon waders uh it's a full booted waders because it's easier to to rinse off later you know i don't have to worry about the water getting in or you know sand getting between the pants and the socks or anything like that i just need one set of waders and you know it's, it's a little cheaper because you don't have to pay for waiting socks or you know waiting shoes it's just one set this set alone cost me 60 bucks and it came with a bag that was a benefit it came with a belt and a bag and for me i choose these waders because in the summertime i heard neoprene waders it gets really hot and you could buy two waders but i'm too cheap in hawaii we call them pake or you know a cheap chinese person that's me i'm pake so it's too expensive for me to, to buy two sets of waders so I, the reason why i use this waiter is because i just layer up early in the morning it's cold i wear about you know six to eight layers in the morning uh so for me i like using this because then later on if i get too warm you know i can start taking it off but for the most part i'm wearing all all of these layers throughout the whole entire day uh compared to if we're wearing the neoprene and it's starting to get hot you know you're getting sweaty you're gonna have to take off all these layers and you gotta figure out you know what you're gonna store in your backpack or where you're gonna put it on the beach or you know wherever so for me i like to use these nylon wares and these full boots just because it's easier to clean and in the morning you know it's it's the best of both worlds where it's it keeps me warm enough but not overly hot Another good thing to do with these waders is to wear your belt on the outside of your jacket. So normally you wear your layers on the inside, you'll put on your waders or, you know, if it's a full chest waders, then you'll usually have a rain jacket to put on the outside. So then, you know, that way when the water splashes on you, it's not going inside of your waders, it's staying on the outside because your rain jacket is on the outside. So one important safety feature is to have a good belt and to keep your belt on the outside of the jacket because when the water is coming and you take you fall in that water the water is going to rush up straight you know over your chest into your waders so by having that belt it's just at least one more layer you know to, to prevent the water or at least slow down the water from coming up through your jacket into your waders so in this example here what had happened was we were out crabbing it was low tide i figured i'm gonna look all cool i don't need my belt and we went out low tide and sure enough i had my pole out uh, there's a rock that's kind of blocking it so I could only see the tip of my my pole and what had happened was I was talking to my buddy I could see the tip of my pole I talked to him I looked to my left and boom holy crap my pole's gone we run over there I book it I noticed that you know my my spike is gone my pole is gone uh, in crab scenario you want to make sure your drag is super tight so I knew the wave just probably sucked it in and you know it's gone in there so luckily I knew which direction I casted my snare. So I took my auto pole, took the snare, casted it out. I just dragged the ground. Uh, I was blessed that, you know, it scooped up that braid. We reeled it in. I got my snare in, I reeled in the other side and you know, my pole is stuck. So then I know, okay, it's going this way cause I can see my line. So we're looking at it and then all of a sudden I see my pole just whacking the rock like this. Wah, 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 the wave just whacking it. So uh, me being the dummy that I am, I told my buddy, hey, try to hold my wallet, try to hold my uh, keys, I'm gonna go get them. So then I, wear, I went into the water thinking because, you know, in Hawaii, I go spearfishing, I can swim, you know, I'm okay, you know, I can survive. So I go in the water, not thinking anything. And by the time, you know, this happens, the tide is coming up. We started at low tide, the tide's starting to come up and the waves are probably, uh, probably about five feet or so you know four or five feet so when the big waves come you know i'm jumping like this trying trying to not you know get sucked under the water i'm trying to keep my head above the water like that so i'm jumping in the wave like that and then uh, i reach my pole and then i was like oh you know i can untangle them so i said screw them so i just undid my bail flipped the bail and then i just started walking back to the 
to the shore. But you know, just by me jumping and the wave being so high, the water was getting into my waders and my feet was dragging so, it felt so heavy. And you know, if I didn't flip that bell and I stayed out there, dude, for sure, you know, there's no way I could swim back. I would have to, you know, ditch my waders or something to get back. So I'm trying to get back to shore and then uh, the surfer guy's on shore. He's just looking at me like, oh, what's going on? But you know, of course, you know, help. I'm struggling out there for, struggling out there for my life. But uh, so yeah, I flipped my bail. I walked back to shore. I got the pole back. Uh, we cut the line. I pulled the line back. It unraveled from the rock. So, you know, cause I didn't want to leave any braid, you know, in the ocean. So I, we got it all back. And then uh, this is what happened. Oh, uh, oh, there we go. Is it recording? The life of a diehard fisherman. Uh, I can get my foot out. <laughs> Here it goes, ready? <laughs> All right. well, we fish it. <laughs> so yeah, guys. Don't be a one dummy like me. Keep your belt on, you know, try to be safe out there. It can be dangerous, you know, here in San Francisco, we have rogue waves. Uh, for me, it's, it's if you see a wave coming this way and you see another wave coming this way and they hit each other, like that, that's the danger zone for me because you got one that, you know, you prep before, but then I want boom, wacky from the other side. So, you know, this incident that happened was my fault because I'm the one who decided to hop in the water. You know, it wasn't the waves that knocked me down, but it does happen here, guys. So be safe, you know, think, you know, look at your surroundings around you. Never turn your back, never, never turn your back to the ocean. Even when I'm walking back, when I flip my bail after I cast, I'm still looking to the side watching the ocean because you never know what can happen. Respect the ocean because if she wants you, she's going to take you. So just be careful and watch what you guys are doing out there. Another important tool that you're going to need is a crab gauge. You can get a ticket if you don't have one. Some game wardens are cool where, you know, they'll say as long as you have a tape measure or, you know, any type of measuring device to do it. But technically, you definitely need a crab gauge. And, you know, why risk trying to get a ticket? So an important thing that you need for sure when going crabbing is a fishing license. If you're on the pier, it's free. But if you're on the beach, you need a license and crab gauge. So you got your waders. Now you need a pole. For me, uh, I think the average that you should have is at least a 10 foot pole to 15 feet. Most people use around, you know, 12, 13 feet. Me personally, the 12 footer, I can cast a 12, but it feels a little too heavy for me. So I like the 11 footer. For me, like the 11 footer is that sweet spot. So I have a 10 footer and a 11 footer. Uh, the main important thing about the pole is the lure rating. You want to have a pole that you know can do at least i would say at least six ounces if you could find one more you know between six to you know 15 ounces even better because on average you're going to be casting out you know snares uh anywhere from say three ounces to 14 15 ounces honestly for me i i cast 13 ounces and if i need more than that then you know most likely the, cra the crabs are already bunkered down and they're not even going to be coming out because the waves and the current is so nuts that you know they don't want to deal with it because the wave can scoop them up and you know make them travel but you want to make sure that your pole can handle at least you know i would say six ounces my poles personally are six ounces i don't really use it for six ounces i use it for a lot more uh like i said a paquet so the reason why is because i'll cast out you know on average usually about eight ounces to 13 ounces so it's not recommended that, that you cast out more than your lure rating but it's important that you at least have a pole that has a good lure rating of, you know, at least six, six ounces or more, I'll say. Okay. Because on average, you are going to be casting around, you know, if it's calm, you know, you could do three ounces, maybe four ounces. But, you know, once the waves start picking up, you're going to add more weight to your snare because the most important thing for crabbing is keep your snare staying still on the ground so the crabs have time to go over there and start eating them. So I would say, you know, at least a lower rating of six or more is important. One thing that I like to do is I like to add reflective tape to my fishing poles. So then that way, when I go early in the morning, you know, or if I'm fishing at night, uh, I can just shine my light and I can easily see, you know, where the pole's at, you know, keeping track of it to make sure that it didn't get sucked by the ocean or anything like that. And a lot of people in Hawaii use this so that, you know, when we're fishing for luas, you can tell which pole is getting whacked. So having reflective tape on your pole, you know, is definitely an advantage at night. 
As far as reel sizes, I would suggest 6,000 to 8,000 sized reels. Um, you're gonna be pulling in a lot of weight, so you need you know, a heavy reel. I personally have a 6,000 and an 8,000. Uh, for me, I like the 6,000 because you know, it is lighter and I can also use it for fishing. The 8,000 definitely you know, gives you that security feeling of you know, no matter what, you know, I'll be able to reel this thing in. Uh, but yeah, a 6,000 to 8,000 reel is what I strongly suggest if you're gonna use this thing for crabbing at the pier or you know, from shore. As far as line rating, I would say with I use braid, so I use 65 pound braid. You can use, you know, between 65 and 80 pound braid is what, you know, I see a lot of people using. Um, a lot of people also use mono, which is perfectly fine. For me, it's the security of knowing that basically I'm attaching a rope to my snare so I have a better chance of keeping it from snapping. But some people, what they'll do is they'll add a shock leader, which is basically adding like 10, 15 feet of uh, mono on there just so that, you know, it's more flexible so when you cast it out, that heavy snare, you know, will use that bounce from that mono. It's not just gonna be like an instant snap from your braid. So a lot of people do use uh, shock leaders. I haven't really had a problem uh, snapping snares. Of course it does happen and it's usually because I'm just whipping that sucker because it's so heavy. But on average, you know, I, I normally just tie straight braid to, to my um, swivel and then I just add that to, to the snare. One thing is when you go to the pier, you're gonna hear a lot of people saying that they hate people that bring braid or they hate having braid at the pier. Nowadays, I see a lot more people bringing braid out there because it's mainly the OGs who, you know, they don't like braid because when your braid crosses their mono, you can have a possibility of cutting their mono or, you know, trying to untangle the lines. You know, it's a lot harder because, you know, braid is so thin that you have a harder time trying to untangle it. So when you go to the pier, you know, as a courtesy, most people, want you to use uh, mono or floral. Of course, more, most people use mono because it's the cheaper one. So when you go to the pier, just be cautious, you know, pay attention to your lines if you are bringing braid. Pay attention because, you know, once you cross with somebody, it's gonna be a tangle. So, you know, most people are nice where we'll try to work things out where, you know, hey, go over under. But, you know, just one, one warning, you know, for the pier is that a lot of people at the pier do want you to use mono instead of braid. So next is we have swivels. There's different types of swivels. You know, the two type of swivels that I use is this style, but I mainly use this style. It's called a rolling swivel, where this basically, you know, rotates like this, and it's a coast lock. So for me, I like this swivel just because it gives me that extra insurance of locking versus, you know, a regular snap swivel because those are good, but it can also be easily, you know, opened versus this one where the clip, if you can see that, will actually hook on and it'll lock right there. So me personally, I like to use these and uh, it's, you know, of course, you know, it's, it's a bigger uh, gauge. So that swivel that I just showed you is rated for 120 pounds. It came as a kit. Um, that's the biggest swivel. So that's the reason why I choose that one because I don't want to lose my snare. So of course you want, you know, a higher rating a swivel to hold it. So the way that these crab snares work is when a crab smells your bait, they're gonna start walking over and they're gonna start nibbling at your bait. And their claws, their legs, sometimes even their bodies are gonna get wrapped in through that loop. And when you reel this in, what you wanna do is you wanna make sure that you tighten your drag, you know, as tight as possible, because as soon as you loosen your drag, that crab is gonna get let go. The loop is gonna open. So you wanna tighten down your drag, you want to slowly reel it until you can feel the weight start, you know, you feel that little resistance on your pole. That means, you know, you got all your slack out from your line. Once you have all that slack out from that line, you want to pull back and just start reeling it. You want to just constantly reel it because you want to keep that tension on that loop. As soon as this loop closes, it's basically going to grab that crab, you know, kind of like a noose. It's just going to grab that crab and you want to keep that pressure so that that loop does not open again. So just constantly reel it. The good thing about the beach is that if you get tired, you can just, you know, you can stop reeling and just start walking backwards with it and you're gonna still keep tension on it. The main thing is tension. For the pier, it's a lot harder because not only are you bringing this crab in, but you have to bring it up another 50 feet, you know, from the top of the ocean to the top of the pier where you're at. And you're gonna have to just constantly crank that, that line up. And, you know, you're bringing up if you say you have a double, you know, you could be bringing up, you know, a pound to say, you know, almost five pounds, you know, plus the ounces on your weight, plus your bait, 
plus two crabs that you got on there maybe. So you're just basically reeling in all this dead weight on the pier. So the pier is a lot tougher versus the beach because, you know, like I said, you can just walk back if you get tired, you know, and just keep reeling. The main thing is that you want to keep tension on this snare the whole entire time so the loops don't open. So the construction of your crab snare is also important. I use 16 gauge uh, wire mesh because when you have a rock crab, they're just gonna beat that crap out of your cage because they got you know such large claws and strong claws that they'll just beat it up. Uh, Dungeonists, they can mess it up too, but it's mainly the rock crabs who are gonna beat the crap out of your cage. So for me, at least 16 gauge. When I first started, I went to Home Depot, you know, and I think the biggest they had was 18 gauge. And it definitely does work, but I would have to you know constantly be making new cages because uh, that rock crab would just beat the crap out of it. So I have at least, you know, 16 gauge to, to withstand against the, the rock crabs. And the one that I use is a half inch by one inch uh, square or rectangle. The really good ones are a half inch by half inch. Ken the crab sir, he makes uh, good ones because, you know, they're half inch by half inch. So they have a less chance of the crab pulling your bait out. Uh, for me, I'm, I like working with my hands. So I like to make my own and the half inch by half inch is too expensive. so. I found one that, that was good for a half inch by one inch, so that's the one that I use. So the really good snare is already have the weight for the lead uh, melted to the cage itself. But you know, once you throw it out there, you know, you're only throwing out, you know, the six ounces, eight ounces, you know, whatever ounce snare that you bought. So if the current's pushing it, you're gonna wanna add more weights. So the different types of weights that you could use, you know, like a coin weight. Uh, this is good because it'll hold it, it'll hold it really good where, you know, the, the current can't really push it because it's not really rolling. Uh, most people use a pyramid sinker, which looks like this. This is good because you wanna make sure that when you add it to your snare, that the pointed ends of the triangle is facing your crab snare because what it does is it's gonna lock, when you give it a quick jerk once you set your pole, it's gonna help and lock into the sand like this. So this is how a pyramid sinker works. Another weight is this way here, it's called, uh, it's actually made for crab snares. And what it is is that basically, oh, I should hold it like that, four ounces. So basically what it is is that you can add this into your crab snare. It's basically like melting uh, the weight to it, but instead, you know, just putting it in there. At first I used to always use this because it is bendable where you can actually bend it like that. And I'll just hammer the crap out of it to get it to fit into the snare. But you know, that takes up space from adding bait. So for me, the, the better snares to get are the ones that already have the lead uh, melted to the snare. And if the current's really pushing it, a lot of people, you're gonna see this style. It's called a Sputnik. And basically the way that this works is that say your sand is here. When you do it, same, same theory like the pyramid is that this is actually gonna dig into the sand like this and it's gonna hold it. And once you're ready to reel it in and you, you jerk it really hard to pull it in, this thing will actually release like this so that, you know, you don't have as much resistance when you reel it in. So basically it just breaks off or it doesn't break off. It just bends back like this. So then that way, when you're reeling it in, you know, it'll, it'll let go of the rock or whatever you're hooked up on. And then it'll just be an easier way of reeling it in. So the main important thing, like I said earlier, is that you wanna make sure that your snare is grounded to the ground because the crab will have a better chance of coming up and eating your bait and just chilling there. Bait time. A lot of people have their own theory or experience of you know baits that they use. Uh, most people just use squid. It doesn't matter really if it's frozen or fresh. Uh, I've tried both and I've caught both because you know crabs are bottom feeders. It don't really matter. Um, they use anchovies, smelt, squid. You know, chicken. Some people put chicken in there. Uh, the good thing about the chicken is that at the pier, you know, I have a buddy where he had squid and he threw it down in his hoop net, and the seal kept jumping in. You know, ripping that thing apart, grabbing all of you know the fish and the squid. But when he put chicken in there, the seal didn't know what the heck it was. So, you know, the seal left it alone and he was still able to, to catch crab. So, you know, for my experience, chicken is the way to go if you're gonna use a hoop net at, at the pier. You can use it, you know, it's just that, you know, if you see that seal, you know, you have a chance of it getting broken into by, by that seal. Another thing that people use is um, Procure, and it's gonna look backwards because I'm on my selfie, but this is called butt juice. This was the most popular, you know, like a year or two years ago or something like that. Everybody's using the, uh, this butt juice, but there's also different ones. Like I also have sardine, I also have anchovy. So there are different procure um, scents that you can use. Uh, basically you just wanna you know, get the best smell out there because 
you figure now that crabbing is so popular, it's crazy how much people are out there. I think because of COVID, uh, people just been watching YouTube and coming out there to the beaches, you know, and the, the pier closed. So a lot more people were at the beach and it's the most uh, crabbing people that I've seen, uh, you know, since I've been doing it for years for now, but it's the most people that I've seen now. So you think, you figure everybody has, you know, if everybody has squid, you want to try and get something a little different in there to try and get their attention because, you know, there's just a lot more competition having all that bait out there. Uh, another trick that I do is I take the squid and if I have anchovies, I actually stick the anchovy inside of the, the squid hood just so that, you know, when the crabs are trying to nibble at this, they will, they'll have a harder chance trying to get that anchovy, but that anchovy scent is still in there. Uh, another helpful tint that I learned from Ishwood Fish, uh, shout out to him, is I putting another piece of squid on my crab snare. So then that way it'll entice the crabs to stay out there and just nibble it, you know, a little bit longer. So what I do is after I reel in uh, a few pulls, I'll use that old bait. So I forgot to mention that once the bait, you know, you'll see squid, you'll start sealing their tentacles, will start curling. For me, that's it getting too old. So I like to swap it out for new bait, you know, once that starts happening. So once I reel it in and I have a whole bunch of old bait, I'll just put it back separately in, inside of that squid juice. And when, I, when I'm ready to bait up my snare, I'll bait, bait it up with the new snare and I'll take that old bait, I'll put it on top. And then with my hook, I'll strap it over the old bait just to hold it. So then that way I'm not wasting new bait, you know, but I'm using that old bait to throw it out there and hopefully, you know, keep the crab's attention there a little bit longer by nibbling the one on top and then trying to get the good one on the inside. Another important tip for the beach is a sand spike. Uh, these are two different styles of sand spikes that I personally uh, use. This green one is a cheaper version. Uh, you can check out Fisherman's Life, shout out to him. Matt, he's the one who uh, has a YouTube video actually of how to build this one. And this one is, it's good, but for me, it's just that, you know, over time the heavy waves, they'll push it and it can bend a lot easier versus the one on your left. Made out of a heavier gauge aluminum. Uh, it's an eighth of an inch thick and it's for me this one's a lot more sturdy in the water this is also you know the same style that you can buy from amazon if you want and it's probably cheaper if you buy one that's already pre-made but i'm a fabricator i like working with my hands so this one i made you know it's a four foot stick i bought it from home depot for i think like 20 bucks 24 bucks something like that and basically i just cut the ends um at like a 45 degree to make that point so that way you know you can stab it into the sand and you just basically when you stab into the sand you just rock it back and forth uh front to back so then that way you know it'll go in the sand deeper so what i do is i'll rock it back and forth i'll stop you know maybe ha a little bit more than halfway and i'll start piling sand back in there and then i'll rock it again until you know you keep rocking it until you feel it get very tight then you know you have a good grip in the sand because like i said in in earlier is that you know when the wave starts coming up that sand is going to get softer and softer so keep an eye on, on your pole and your rod because the more that that sand is wet from from the waves and your spike being in there you know the better chance of your spike falling so keep an eye out on it i use a four foot stick like i said just because you know for me that's i feel more comfortable using that that it's not going to fall out so you got your waders you got your poles you got your reels your line your snare is out uh, you already got it in your spike, so now it's time to reel it in. So uh, on average, I, I usually wait about, in the beginning, about eight minutes. For me, eight minutes is, is a good time to, to check my bait because you're going to figure out, you know, later on, if the crabs are constantly feeding, you know, when you bring it in eight minutes, boom, that means, okay, I need to bring it in faster because the crabs are active right now they're really hungry or you know eight minutes and it looks like they haven't touched it so i'll let it sit out there for you know maybe 13 minutes so usually most people they'll average around between like five and 15 minutes 15 minutes is, is kind of long but if the bite is really slow you know it, it might be more beneficial uh there are videos where you know you can see on youtube where as soon as they cast it you know those crabs pick up that scent really fast so if they're nearby, you know, for sure they're gonna grab it. So on average for me, I usually set mine around eight minutes. So after that eight minutes, you wanna make sure that your drag is set tight because, you know, like I said earlier, if there's any tension that's lost, that snare loop is gonna open and you're gonna lose your crab. So make sure that, you know, if, if you don't tighten it beforehand, 
you know, make sure you tighten it before you at least reel in. Uh, and then once you pull back, you want to give it kind of a smooth motion of pullback. You don't want to jerk it because what I've learned is that when I jerk it, sometimes the, the snare will actually cut the legs off or cut, you know, cut a claw off. So I'll reel it in all of a sudden, I just have a leg or a claw. So think smooth, okay? Because you don't want to tire yourself out, you know, if you're doing it fast. So just pull it back, you know, with a smooth motion, you know, and just reel it at, at like a, at a steady pace, but, you know, making sure that you're not, you know, losing that tension on that, that snare. I keep saying tension, 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 because that is the main important thing that you don't want to lose when you have a crab on. Another thing is when the waves pick up your crab, when that happens, I usually reel it in faster because you figure when the waves come in and he has your snare, basically it's gonna bring all this slack to your pole. So when, when I see it, either I'll try to, if I can see my crab, I'll try to time it where I'll bring it after the wave is coming. But if, you know, it's too choppy out there and I see that my snare is inside of the wave, you know, or you, all of a sudden you feel that, that loose um, tension in there, I'll just start cranking it faster, just trying to pick up all that slack from when the wave is doing it. Because once it's in that wave, you know, you have a high chance of losing that crab because that wave's gonna pick it up, you know, you're gonna have all the slack and it's gonna slam it back down, which you know, you're gonna have more slack again. So when the wave starts coming up, I'll just try to crank it a little bit faster to, to keep that tension so I'm not losing, I don't have all that slack. I'll just keep reeling it in fast and that's how I, how I bring it in. All right, you got a crab now. So now you need a bucket. So you, most people you'll see out there, they'll have, you know, like a three gallon to five gallon uh, bucket. So once you have this bucket, you want to constantly um, replenish your, your salt water, you know, or, or change it out because you want to keep this crab, you know, living as long as possible. So you want to buy a, a bubble aerator. You can pick one up from Walmart or Amazon, you know, wherever. It doesn't matter what brand, uh, just as long as it's creating the, the bubbles in, in the water, creating that air for them to, to breathe. You want to keep your crabs fresh and healthy uh, before you leave. So I usually change my water, you know, maybe two to three times while I'm crabbing. Um, you know, for sure, once you first catch it, you know, kind of in the middle and for sure before I leave, I'll swap that out, that water out so then, you know, he'll have, you know, fresh water when I'm leaving. Another thing that I do is I like to keep a cooler in the back of my car, just because I don't want that water to spill all over my car before my wife gets mad. So what I do is I bring a cooler and then, you know, I dump the crab in my cooler and, you know, I just empty that bucket of water in that cooler. That way it's not splashing around, you know, getting water taken out of the bucket. All right, pier setup. The good thing about going to the pier is, you know, you got bathrooms. Uh, Pacifica Pier also has a cafe there where you can get coffee, you can get sandwiches there and you don't need waiters, you don't need sand spikes. So it's a lot nicer because you don't need all this extra gear uh, to fish at the pier. And one thing that helps me is out is I like to bring my wagon. It'll just help, you know, carry my gear as well as when I do catch crabs, it'll also be able to carry that, you know, with the five gallon bucket of water in there. You know, it'll be easy to just roll back to my car. So I like to bring a wagon when I go to the pier. So just as a reminder, like I said earlier, you know, is that, you know, the OGs out there, they prefer to see people using uh, mono because, you know, like I said, the braiding cut or, you know, it's harder to get the braid knots out. So just keep in mind that, you know, if you have braid out there, you might hear hate. I haven't personally had anybody hate on it. I'm pretty cool with everybody that's there. But you know, just a strong suggestion is that they want you to use mono when you go out to the pier. And when you go out to the pier, you're only allowed to have two poles uh, fishing on the pier and it's all undercast. You can't overcast, you can only undercast at the pier. On the beach, it's a little different where you can have you know as many poles as you can handle. Uh, most people you'll see bring out, they all usually only bring out two poles, maybe three at most, uh, unless they got you know friends or family with them so on the beach you know as well as you know you can use two poles you can have more but on the pier you're only allowed to have two poles so pacifica pier is now open so one suggestion that i have i learned this from an og is to buy a smaller bucket and have you know a 50 i would say probably you know 60 70 foot rope uh for this bucket and the reason why you get this smaller bucket is because before you know we throw these five gallon buckets over and we try to fill it up with water you know fresh for the crabs you start bringing it in and not only is it heavy but the buckets sometimes because it just has that thin wire over the bucket that you know it just feels like it's going to break so what i learned from the og is you bring a smaller bucket fill it up with water and you know just do you know two three bucketfuls and dump that into your five gallon 
This helps because it's a lot lighter, as well as, you know, the ratio for the weight of that water plus, you know, the strength of that bucket handle. Uh, it's, it's a lot closer to each other, so, you know, when you're bringing it up, you don't feel like, you know, you're gonna break your, your bucket. Because I have seen people lose their buckets, you know, floating in the water. Everybody's just trying to go back and try to get it. Uh, I've seen people lose hoop nets in the water. It gets tangled along the pylon, so pay attention when you do have hoop nets out there. Um, you know, even crab snares too. Just pay attention to, to where your line's at because the, the pier is, you know, constantly having the, the current push and the waves pushing so, you know, it can easily just wrap you around the pylons there. So pay attention to where that's at. And, you know, for me, having that smaller bucket was definitely a game changer and definitely helps out. That's all the tips I got for you guys today. Uh, I hope that helped. You know, if you have any questions, you know, feel free to, to leave a comment below. Except where I'm fishing, I ain't gonna tell you that. But you know, if you need any tips, you know, or, or helpful ideas, you know, I'm, I'm here to help as much as I can. Uh, so yeah, tight lines, guys. Mahalo for watching. I'll check you guys on the next one. Kidding, okay, bye.